Hi, it's Cole here. Today I have my collection of American out. And do you want to know why? Well, you're never going to hear the word American past my lips besides that time. For good reason. Ugh. And that's an ugh as best as I can do it. Now anyways, besides that bit of humor, I'd like to talk about American today because it's confused so much, and I don't blame people. I mean, it can be tricky. I bought, let me put this down real quick slowly so Vicky Hall doesn't get sick. Uh, don't worry, Vicky, I'm not trying to sit on you. Uh, here we go. You see this? Prime example of, I mean, if some people like Whitehall because it's more vintage than it is. American, just as utilitarian. American tends to break a bit more than Whitehall, though. Now, this is Whitehall. I keep it under my desk because I really don't use it for anything. I don't know what the hell to use it for. Uh, three. Ugly. Now, that's, a defining, that's one of the defining features. If it has post feet, this is Indiana. With a little circle on the edge, too, and it'll be sharp. An American will have more clarity. You see how this sparkles? Just, just see how that gets the light so well. You can see the little shadow. Just it refracts like water. And you see this. It, the shadow is not as... The shadow is more defined on this because the squares are bigger. But it doesn't sparkle near as much. If you look, it glints. It doesn't sparkle. It isn't clear. And the spears here, they're rounded. I hope you can see that. They're a bit rounded. The post-like feet, the rounded features... And the fact that it only has two mold seams. American will always have three or more, even on the cut. Surprisingly enough, sheer and depression glass, you my finger making a point. Sheer and depression glass has three mold seams in the cups, which is really why I started liking sheer in the past month. Now, another thing to note sometimes the mold seams aren't polished completely off, like on this. I found this at Goodwill for $2. One of my favorite finds, it is a Fostoria American butter dish. It's a, 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 a lemon dish. It can be used as butter. It makes a nice butter dish. Uh, but a lemon dish it is. And see this knob? How it's shaped like that? Let's see if I can get that. It is a hexagon. Now, Indiana will try to remake that. Making their own molds and reusing Fostoria molds. They called it American Whitehall. Now this is polished, it's fire polished, very smooth, very high quality feeling. You see that edge? See how even the edge shines? It's been fire polished. Now, while I'm at it, what, if you ever have anything two-piece, I always take things out like this so I get a firm grip on it. It will have chips, most likely. This has chips. Not bad. I mean, considering... Oh, was it this side? Yes, it was this side. Considering it is, most likely, they made the butter dish from 1915 to 1941, I think it was 1945 to 1976. But this butter dish appears to be older. So I finally tracked down the lady who owned it, who gave it to Goodwill, and she said, I gave that thing away. My mother had it, and... She, um, she would put it out every day, and it's just I knew someone would find it at Goodwill that cared for it, and I found it. So she was really happy, and she gave me, she gave me this. Oh, wait, wait, where is it? Where'd it go? Oh yeah. She gave me. Turns out at Goodwill, I found one of these. She gave me another. This is Homer Lawton Great Key. She just gave me this little bowl. It was so kind of her. I really like Greek key. Ivory, Greek key. It's just wonderful. Eggshell Nautilus is just wonderful. Now, there are two styles. These are the iced teas. There the, all this was sent to me by Sharon Thompson Sullivan. Except for this saucer. This is flow blue, terrain flow blue. And this cup. Because she, she didn't send me any sauce. She didn't have any, I don't think. But she sent me her cups. Now, a few of the cups, let's, let me go get some, and I'll show you.
show you how quality varies on the soft story immensely. Pull it out. Now, sometimes you get a lazy worker. It happens everywhere. Look at that. Of course, it's still usable. But look how it glints like Whitehall instead of sparkling like American. And the mold seams are so prevalent, the handle's uncomfortable. It's not, it's not Sharon's fault, it's the worker's fault who made it. I mean, I can send it out to get refire polished, I would imagine. Which I might eventually. Sentimental value and all that. And another thing, look at this. You see that little itty bitty line in there? Those cracks are very common in Fostory. It's very strong. If you drop it, it will crack. And you can. You can't hear it, but it goes. If I move it just a little bit, very faintly, very hard to hear. Also has it on this handle. Right here. It just happens. I mean, they're still usable. They're beautiful, too. I love American. This is the tea size sugar and creamer. And there are two styles of iced tea. These have flared rims, as you can see. And these have... No, the rims aren't as flared. You can see the two right there. See the difference? Thinner, more flared, thicker. I think the thicker ones are older. Another good thing is that American the scratches are hit so well by these rays, and it's just very sparkly pattern. Now, the luncheon plates, these edges can be sharp, or they can be flowing a little bit. See that one sharp? This edge is flowing. Another good thing about American, well, besides the salt, salt shakers are just so utilitarian. I love using them. I have salt in them in my room all the time. You would, uh, that's the second thing of salt I went through this week. I love salt. I eat so much mashed potatoes. It's unbelievable. It's Irish in me. And here's something Gail Huggard sent me. Wonderful condition. Unfortunately, my little brat of a sister opened the packaging and took the original sticker off of it. I was really happy. I mean, I would have taken it off as well, but I would have put it on a piece of paper, laminated it, and kept it as a memento. But it's it's flared right here. My thumb fits in perfectly. It feels so wonderful drinking from, eating from. It's a nice little short champagne. Ginger ale, tonic. Well, the good thing about American is everything goes with American. That goes. It makes a nice little colonial style. Colonial style lunch. Another thing, Flow Blue goes very well with American, in my opinion. That's a little bit of playfulness to it. I really like Flow Blue. This is it's given to me my big cousin. She just found it in her pantry. She ascertained it, probably an antique mall. It was dollar fifty on the back of it, so she didn't pay much. It has a little bit of a crackle. There's the Torain mark. You could probably make it out. Well, let me put this down in the midst of the pretty. It's a nice photograph. Here, I'll grab the, well, the Noritake bowl. This is Noritake gold, Ray. It was, the replacement said it was discontinued around 1918. I'm assuming it went up until at least the 40s. But, I mean, it's very Victorian style, very simple. Elegant. Well, actually, it's more deco. It's very deco, actually. Never mind, why did I say that? My idiocy comes out. And I just like these on anything. Colonial style. You put it with the American. I can even take that off and it probably... Look, it works. See, it's just... If you see something like this, I bought four for twelve. And these are Noritake, so I can hear them ring. Just get them. I mean, I paid a dollar a piece for these sets. They're nice Chinese sets. Very nice bone china. But American and Whitehall are easily separated. I went off on a huge tangent. Just showing you how pretty American is. And thank you, uh, thank you, Sharon, for sending them to me. I absolutely love them. I don't use them as often as I want. I've, they've been under my curio cabinet in the cabinets to keep them safe. Because I already accidentally dropped this one. Oops, it happened. Whitehall. 
two mold seams or two mold seams. I haven't seen one with three yet, and I doubt there's one with three. These, it's not a definite feature, but a lot of times they'll be rounded. That's a giveaway. These post-like feet. I already gave away my bonbon to my the lady who works at my violin academy. Her name is Barbara Meek, and she's just a wonderful lady. I she, she lost all her Ruby American her mother had in a fire. She interesting story about Ruby American. It might get selenium in it. But she said when her house was on fire, her curio cabinet was the most was the brightest thing in that house, and the red glass just popped out of the cabinet. It went through the cabinet, literally flew through the wood, flew through the glass, so of course glass shattered, and its pieces are embedded in her lawn. Ruby American, pretty and explosive. Hot stuff, isn't it? But um sad. She also lost her reproduction Galliano violin in it. And if you know violins, you know Billy D. Sad thing. Thankfully, it was just a copy made in the late early 1800s, but still found it almost as good to me. Two mold seams, rounded spears, post-like feet. Fostoria will be splayed. They'll go out like this. Feet splay out, go up. Straight. Straight, like a human foot. Three mold seams, Crystal clear most of the time. Of course, you get that occasionally. Mold things will often be polished into non-being. Almost. You can still faintly see them. And American contains cheap pieces. Well, I mean cheap as in... Not that cheap. That's just cheap laziness. Darn workers. But it, um... Inexpensive pieces. These are worth only about fifteen dollars to fifteen twenty a piece. The book price probably worth about twelve fifty in this economy. But I wouldn't sell this set for the world. Sharon gave it to me. I absolutely love it. Perfect luncheon set. And uh, it's wonderful for breakfast. You lay this out for breakfast, you wake up to sparkle. Unfortunately, my family doesn't appreciate that, but oh well. <laughs> I do. I have my own table next to the dining table. It's, it's actually. Our house being renovated, so I have an extra table near the end of the end of the house. We only have a small two-story, and it's just my table. We eat Sunday dinner there every Sunday now, and I bring out the good Sharon cabbage rose and Sant Duncan and Miller sandwich dinner, and we just have a ball. Last week it was salad and roast chicken. My favorite, anything chicken. You have expensive pieces. This one's worth about fifty dollars in this economy. Eh, maybe 30, if you're lucky. Ice teas. Eh, they're worth a good $18 a piece. I mean, uh, nowadays you get them for about $8 a piece. Book price is 18 Sherbets, these aren't worth much. They're worth about $5. But I love this, and Scale gave it to me. It's just so sparkly. You, the light hits this in the right way. Sorry for my camera making funny. But at this. There's white around. It will not make funny pictures. Let's do the ha. Trick the camera. Brain over bronze. Brain over technology. And if the light hits that the right way, it bounces off these squares, hits the geometric stem, and just rays off. Now, the most expensive piece in American, I believe, would have to be the... Canary or Vaseline hair receiver lid, which has never been found. Any of the Vaseline pieces are probably the most expensive. One of the most expensive is the original flower vase with matching frog, which I think sells for around $3,000. My favorite piece, of course, being a tea lover, the round sugar cuber. And the sugar cuber is a lid where it has two prongs on it, flat, why it's down. You pull the lid off, and the sugar cuber is shaped like... It's kind of flared. It goes down like this, kind of like the bottom of a cup. It's flat. Now you take the lid off, two little prongs, they fold up, and there's sugar tongs coming out the bottom. So convenient. Now this actually came in square. So Billy D told me he was friends with the man who wrote the book on Foster American, which I am too poor to own. So if anybody has a spare copy, I might trade glassware for it because I really would like it. Now, I have never bought a piece of American besides that and two other pieces. Stuff has been given to me. American's just not one of my goals, but it's stuff I pick up on the side because I do like the pattern well enough. And I feel 
It's just expensive in antique malls. It's America's favorite pattern. It was produced for a long period of time, and everybody knows it. So finding a good deal, hope they think it's Whitehall. Hope to God they think it's Whitehall. <laughs> Had to dramatically move the camera. Sorry, Vicky. And, uh, and that's about it for American. If you remember those two differences between Whitehall, as I said earlier, two mold seams, rounded spears, post-like feet, terrible quality, three mold seams, good quality, and splayed feet on the foot of piece. If you remember that, Foster American's a cinch. It is a cinch beyond belief. It's just you've got to drill that in your head. Whitehall has two mold seams, American has three or more. That is the defining feature. And another defining feature would have to be the clarity. That clarity is a huge difference. And Jeanette's cube will not even come close. It will be closer to Whitehall. It's even better than Whitehall, in my opinion. It can get better than Whitehall. It's, it's that bad. But I mean, if you're a vintage enthusiast, it's nice to have laying around the house. It's utilitarian and usable. I won't knock it that much. As it is Indiana, but Indiana's later years didn't produce very good glass. So, there you have it. There are the differences and a run through of Whitehall and why a, <laughs> a run through of American and why I love it. And since I forgot to give you the dates, American was produced from 1915 to 1986. Well, there you have it. I hope to see you all next time. This is Cole signing out. Still finding out a way to put the end. Maybe add music. Don't know. Well, see you all next time. Love you all. Goodbye.